On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, the 76ers pick up their third consecutive win with a dominating performance over the Sacramento Kings. How did they get it done? Was it up to the standards of Keith Pompey and a dominating win over a good team? We'll break it all down next right here at Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome. You are locked on 76. I'm Devon Gibbons from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia alongside my co-host and partner from the Inquirer.com. Sixers beat writer that he is. The fantastic Keith Pompey. What's up, man? Yo, what's up? Oh, what's up is uh, three in a row for the team as they're home now <laughs> for seven. They've taken care of business at home. They're now 10 and five at home, Keith, after getting off to that tough start at the beginning of the year. So they're turning things around on their home floor. Four more to go along this seven game homestand. We'll break it all down here shortly. But first, I want to thank everybody for making Locked On 76 as your first listen uh, of the day. We really appreciate it. It's free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, right here on Locked On 76ers. Uh, and remember, Locked On 76ers, again, is free and available. Well, Keith, a uh, dominating performance, man, from the Sixers. Final score, 123-103 over the visiting Sacramento Kings. Six 76er players in double figures, led by Joel Embiid's 31 points. You had a double-double again from James Harden of 21 and 15 assists. On Sunday, he had 16, so that's 31 assists through two games for him. And, and Tobias Harris finishing also with 21 uh, on the on the evening with nine rebounds, seven assists, or an assist. Uh, no, nine assists, seven rebounds. So an assist and rebounds away from a triple. He and Embiid really set the table in the first quarter. So we'll get into all of that. We'll talk about why you think this was one of the games that was an actual good win. And I'll also talk about the team finding their groove right now, at least at home. But yeah, man, uh, an impressive win for this basketball team. A few things stood out to me. Uh, but of course, as always, we'll start with you and your thoughts on what really stood out in the win. Oh, why you guys say it like that? Of course, as always. It's like, now nah, let me let, let me start. So, all right, it was an I win. It's like, nah, it was a good win. It was a quality win. I mean, because it was like a quality opponent. You know what I mean? They had De'Aaron Fox, who, uh, who played. He was um, back. They did a great job. He's back. They did a great job on him. You know, the fact they scored 80 points in, in the first half. Now, again, you know, it, it was one of those things where we kept saying to ourselves, well, I kept saying, like, I didn't know how good this 76ers team was. Now, who knows? They may come back and lay an egg, but I didn't know how good they were. And this was a quality barometer game, and I felt like they passed. There was a lot of – I passed the test. It was a lot of things that stood out with me. Dick. So this guy scored 31 points on just 16 shots. He shot 10 for 16 from the field, right? There was a point in the third quarter with six minutes left. He got his 29th point. He comes back down the next possession, and I'm thinking he's about to attack the basket. He passes the ball – and starts directing traffic, telling people where to go. And then he comes back down, and he's like, swing the ball, swing the ball, like to, to George Niang, who buries a three. So to me, I was really impressed with that because it got to a point where he showed leadership. He was running plays, designing plays, making them get into their offense. To me, that showed leadership. You look at Tobias Harris. He showed a lot of versatility. A lot of versatility. Here we go. Now, two years ago, would you put Tobias Harris on De'Aaron Fox? Probably not, right? But he 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 used his length. He did a quality job. Matisse Thibel showed confidence. James Harden had another game where we talked about he has to be the facilitator. So to me, in my personal opinion, with James and Joel playing together, this was their best victory. The ball moved. Um, it, it like the pace was pretty good. To me, this was a victory that you can say, "Okay, I see what y'all working with." 
21 is uh, 21 points 15 assists for james harden seven rebounds keith and five steals how about that getting his hands in there uh mixing it up a little bit he played 36 minutes and to your point about Embiid's 10 for 16. harden was seven for 13. he made four of seven from three and he missed three free throws which he typically doesn't do his first three opportunities actually he was three for six and and you're right man he was uh he was really good uh tonight and to to what you're saying about Joel Embiid and the sharing of the basketball and not just looking for his 10 for 16 from the floor in 30 minutes he was 11 for 13 from the foul line with seven rebounds and three turnovers one steal one block and two assists that a two assists don't tell the story because as you mentioned he was willingly passing the basketball to his teammates he was such a dominant force against them that he had to take the basketball to the basket and back to the basket work because he got guys in foul trouble uh, as I'll kind of get into the things that I thought stood out to me, how he and Tobias Harris set the tone. He had his defenders in foul trouble immediately. Domitis Sabonis, all-star big man that he is, not known as the best defender out there, but he's certainly an offensive talent. He got him in foul trouble very early. Keegan Murray, the rookie, while both weren't picked up on Embiid, one was, and he picked he he had two fouls and had to be taken out in the first quarter. Uh, they went to their backup in uh, Kada, and Kada came in and picked up three fouls in two minutes, Keith. And then they wound up trying to stick Harrison Barnes on him one foul. He got those guys in so much foul trouble early on that the Sixers were in the bonus. They were able to take advantage of that in the first quarter. They were assisting the basketball, sharing the rock because there was so much attention there and the ball was moving. I, I've talked about on our previous podcast our keys to the game of how I felt I wanted to see them execute the basketball better. And they did that. They had and they, they had overall on the night 34 assists on 43 made baskets. Yeah. Impressive. Sharing the basketball. And as you mentioned with Embiid, he was one of them. He has 16 points in the first quarter because he had to do that because it was just so easy. There's no point of passing the basketball. James Harden had six assists in the first quarter by going to him and Tobias Harris. And Harris had 14 while Embiid had 16. They had 30 of their 39 in the first quarter, setting the tone right away for how that game was going to play out. Then they went off in the second quarter, 41 uh, to 23 in that frame, spread the score out. Uh, eventually up by as much as 28 points in the game and then it got out of hand so the execution i thought was there the sharing of the basketball i, I said i wanted to see them get back in transition and slow things down while they both scored in transition in the first half they had a significant lead over the sacramento kings in, in terms of fast break uh points on, on the night so i thought this was a complete win they're still without tyrese maxi so there's still a lot there but they hit their three pointers again. They were plus six, 16 to 35, two Sacramento's 10 uh, for 42. They were 51% from the floor. They got to the free throw line 27 times, making 21. Rebounding, they got beat on the offensive boards again, but the assist stood out once again by that sharing of the basketball, turning the ball over only 12 times. They only had two turnovers in the first quarter, four in the first half. And uh, they really did a number on this basketball team, as you mentioned, a against a good squad. Now, are we getting carried away? No. We just saw them beat a quality opponent the way that they should beat a quality opponent. Yeah, I mean, that's what I, that's my big takeaway. They beat a quality opponent the way they should. Now, again, it's going to get tougher mm -hmm. on 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 uh, you know, on Friday, but at the same time. You know, this was something that I, I wanted to see. You know, I just wanted to see this. Uh, I wanted to see how James was going to perform. Um, I was going to see. I wanted to see how they did defensively. Um, and and I and I like what I saw. I like what I saw. All right. And also, when you mentioned Tobias Harris, when Matisse Thybul picked up those two fouls in less than sixty seconds, uh, <laughs> uh, Doc Rivers and Dan Burke gave the assignment to Mate to uh, T Tobias Harris to defend De'Aaron Fox in that first quarter. And I thought he did a tremendous job of staying with him, using his length, making it difficult for Fox. He got some help from his teammates, of course, but I thought individually uh, with what he did, taking on that challenge of 
slowing down the head of the snake of their offense. I thought he did a really good job in that first quarter when Matisse Thibault got into the foul trouble. So, you know, that that was that was a, a really good first quarter. So when we come back, we'll get into why again, uh, as Keith liked the things tonight, but why this was the type of opponent that he, and type of performance that he wanted to see from the Sixers and moving forward from this basketball team. We'll do that as we go along here next, right here on Locked on 76ers. But I have to tell you about Tiro. We're in the holiday season and we're getting ready to get to visiting family and visiting friends. And maybe you don't want to drive, whether it's you simply having to uh, just enjoy the evening and enjoy the day overall and not want to take your car and use it. Well, Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles from just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to simply get from a to b test drive the new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits into your everyday lifestyle and many tiro hosts can deliver the car right to you no hassle you don't even have to do anything every trip is backed by liability insurance terms and conditions and exclusions apply forget boring rental cars and find your drive at tiro.com Thanks for making Locked On 76 is your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights. Only Locked On can provide Locked On Sports today available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Keith, a 20-point victory over the Sacramento Kings. The Sixers are now 15 and 12. They remain fifth in the Eastern Conference. Behind the Brooklyn Nets, one game behind them, a game and a half behind the number three seed, Cleveland Cavaliers. They are up right now, one full game on uh, a toe right there behind them uh, in that six seed. And they're starting to hit their groove uh, at home right now. Uh, but as you explain to, to, to me, when we would have our dialogue about it and the listeners and the viewers and everybody who checks in here and reads your stories and all, uh, that this was the type of quality when you were looking for against the opponent. Now, the opponent is the opponent. It's done. It's done. But what what was it? As you mentioned, Harden with his uh, uh, skills of dishing the ball out and B playing the way that he is and Tobias Harris. But it wasn't just those three. There was a, everybody had a hand in this one tonight. So what was it about this one that fit the category of a solid win? You know, I mean, like like you said, everybody. I mean, you talked about how. Um, I mean, you, you talked about how they had a lot of what they had six uh, double digit scores. You know, the, the one thing that that really stood out to me is, and and some people might say I, I talk about them too much or or what have you, but you know, Matisse Thibel, you know, he got his fourth start tonight. They're they're three and one, three consecutive wins. He lost his first game that he started. The Sixers did. But then they won the last three that he started. And he wasn't hesitant at all. Like, you know, he was there. He buried three or four threes. You know, he had he had a um a, a season high 15 point on 15 points on, on five for seven shooting. There was a time like, you know, when he when he got picked up his second foul in the past, you would think you wonder like how is he going to come back? How is he going to adjust to this, right? And he came back and he was and he and he played well. He said the big thing was that, you know, he um it calmed him down a little bit, you know, focus, this and that. You know, you look at a guy like George Niang, he has 12 points. He was four for eight on threes. You know, Shake Milton, you know, Shake Milton's one of those guys. It's kind of hard to believe that, you know, he's a guy that didn't get any burn in the beginning of the season. Now, again, we know what he did in the starting lineup, but you know, he was out there and he was a, a quality four floor floor general um, who had 14 points from five for 10 shooting. So to me, those are the things. Now, P.J. Tucker, those two threes he hit early on were also big, you know, because what it did is 
it made people go out there and guard, you know, as opposed to like just leaving them out there. So, you know, I, I felt like, like you said, this was a quality team win. Now, again, they had some guys who were injured, um, but at the same time, it was a quality team win. And I felt like they got contribution from just about everybody who was in rotation. Now, of course, you know, Jaden, Paul Reed, you know, they came in late later on and played, but I felt like the guys that they all had in there, like early on in the mix, you know, that they really uh, contributed. While I was doing the post game show and you were at the arena in the post game press conference with Sixers head coach, Doc Rivers, uh, one of the things that uh, piqued my interest, of course, since I talked about being the keys to the game for me was uh, how the ball is moving, how they're sharing. And he mentioned how they just simply, they're, they're, they're trusting each other. They're moving it, they're trusting. And, and it's it's a beautiful thing to see it because whatever it was before it wasn't happening that way so he likes how it's it's being done right now uh, with this basketball team so it, it, to to everything that you just said Sacramento was a good opponent and I understand the score is this is their second consecutive game where they were blown out I think it was an 18 point loss and uh, a 20 point loss tonight 18 against the Knicks on Sunday 20 points tonight I mean listen. This is the type of stuff that you, you want to see them do when you have a, a really good opponent against them. There are things that you need to slow down. There are things that you need to clean up on both sides. And they did that. They weren't rushed. I thought the pace was really good. James Harden, when he got out in the open floor and got out in transition, you saw how uh, the, 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 the floor was spread out, uh, giving them options, whether it was him driving or a, a trail man like him be right behind him and just simply dumping it off for him to maneuver it and finish the layup up top to Tobias Harris on the alley-oop that he had. They seem like they're playing with with some, some joy in the game right now. Uh, they look like they're having fun. I haven't seen him beat when you talked about that play when he got his 29th point and you thought he would go right at it again and get 30 and 31, maybe even 32. I mean, man, you see you see the smiles on their faces and you see that when Matisse Thibault will hit that three and I think he also hit a bucket and got fouled and P.J. Tucker – like raised his hands uh, out of out of sheer uh, you know joy that that because you always see him talking to him whether it's a scowl on his face talking to him or just simply directing uh, him that he's trying to help him with stuff and when you bring up Thibel and and what he was able to contribute tonight it has to be frustrating for some him sometimes when it doesn't go his way and tonight it went his way and tonight it went all of their ways and they were willing to share the basketball and and make this a team victory tonight so really good overall win and as you mentioned on on friday against the golden state warriors it's going to be a tough one but another test for them with the uh, 14 and 14 golden state warriors after they lost last night uh they take on the indiana pacers tonight in the second game of a back-to-back -back. so milwaukee took care of them and now we'll see what happens with the Indiana Pacers in game two. They have Thursday off before they take on the Sixers on Friday. Uh, on the other side, Keith, in our final uh, final one here, we'll talk about how important it is to just win at home because they need this to get themselves going before they start to hit the road once again. Seven at home, four more remaining. And look, don't look now, but if let's say and assuming that they win four, just hypothetically, they would be 19 and 12 after all the things that we've talked about that's pretty darn good considering where they started, the injuries that they've had to deal with, and where they could potentially be by the end of this home stand. Coming up, we'll get into that final segment right here, Locked On 76ers. Right now, let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends on for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball to World Cup, we've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use the mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, man. Do it today, people. Do it today. You might as well do it today. You know, why not Gold State and Indiana Pacers? Go for it. Why not? Um, homestand. Uh, 
10 and five right now on the season, Keith. If, if people remember, they lost to Milwaukee in game two. They lost to the San Antonio Spurs in game three, which prompted a good discussion between me and you if San Antonio was good at that time. And uh, uh, then they lost a few others. They lost one to, um, who was that, Washington. They lost the game two. So they've had their struggles at home. But since then, they really cleaned it up. I think they're eight of their last 11, Keith, at home. And they're starting to find a groove for you covering this team and seeing them on the road. Sometimes it's beneficial to play on the road because you can get away from all of the things at home, distractions, if you will, from family, friends, or even the pressure of playing in front of your home. But they've had so much success, so much success over the years of playing at the center, Keith. Uh, how important is this home stand right now as they get Tyrese Maxey back, they get James Harden back? Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris, and we'll see about De'Anthony Melton, who was out last night. Uh, Daniel House Jr. also out last night. How important for you, seeing them both at home and on the road, is it for them to perform like this at home in this particular homestand? I mean, it's a it's a must. I mean, it is is extremely important because you know when we look at it right now, we're saying you know they're ten and five at home, which is you know is 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 good, right? But when you look at on the road, they're five and seven, right? And when you look at the top six teams in the East, which are the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Brooklyn Nets, the uh, Philadelphia Sixers, and the, uh, and, the, and the New York Knicks, right? Only two of those teams have losing records on the road, and that's Cleveland and that's Philly, right? All the rest of those teams, it's funny, believe it or not, um, like they like Boston is 11 and two, Milwaukee's 13 and three, Cleveland's 12 and two, Brooklyn, like the Sixers, are 10 and five, and New York is seven and seven at home. So, really, the Sixers have to hold serve with these teams, keep up with them, and that's continue to win at home because a lot of these teams are playing well, they're playing pretty good basketball. So, to me, it is a must for them to keep keep it because, you know, right now for whatever it is, you know, they're not playing that well on the road. Um, some may say they play some quality teams on the road, but at the same time, you know, being a contending team right now, they play some, they, go, they got the uh, Golden State Warriors coming to town on Friday. This is a game that you really going to have to take advantage of that home court advantage, especially if you want to stay in the race with Brooklyn and Cleveland, who are the two teams right ahead of them. I agree with you hundred percent and it's worked out for them well in the past and, and they need it now, especially when you're trying to, to your point, keep up and keep pace with the rest of the Eastern conference. It's still very early, but you don't want them to get away from you too early. And, and you have to play catch up and have too many games to try to catch up because the only game and a half back of Cleveland right now. Cleveland lost to that Sacramento team early on this trip in game two. While you were blown out by the by the Cavaliers, I'm just saying that in the NBA, anything can happen, as you as you know, and as the listeners and viewers know, anything can happen. So when you're at home and you have an opportunity to take care of your home floor. And when they're going back and forth on the road, three on the road, one home, go back for three more on the road, you need some sort of stability where you have, you know, some some comfort. They're sleeping in their own beds. They don't have to get on a plane or a bus for 18 days. And when they, even when they do, they're going to take a train up to, to Madison Square Garden for that next one. And they have an opportunity to, over this stretch of seven games plus the four that they go on the road, to really do some damage and, and to make up for some of the the losses that they we believe that they should not have had early on so far this campaign so it's important to win at home they're doing it right now and uh tonight last night was arguably their best as you mentioned uh, uh no matter definitely of this homestand but for you of the season so good to see them perform that way and uh, we have a lot to talk about with you tomorrow uh, on the sixers day off they have wednesday and uh, we have thursday off and then Friday, they get back at it. So we'll talk to you on Thursday as we uh, dive into some more key Sixers topics. And, of course, on Friday as we preview the game against the Golden State Warriors on Friday. Nationally televised game, yet again, uh, for the Sixers. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen for your next. Check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, 
and the take of the day available on the odyssey app youtube and wherever you get your podcasts and do you mind keep letting the folks know where they can find us like these just said wherever you get your podcast you can make sure and you can get the uh the uh locked on 76ers podcast and also you could go to our youtube channel go to the youtube channel click on it become on the liberty bell become a subscriber you can listen to divine uh tonight at the divine giving show at 6 to 10 right 6 to 10 p.m the uh the giving show um on 97.5 fm you can follow my man on twitter at divine g975 and then you can follow me on twitter at pompey on sixers and in addition to that you can uh read my articles uh my takeaways from the game on inquire.com well keith have a good wednesday man enjoy the day off uh, even though you're probably writing but overall you don't have to travel so enjoy the day off man yeah thank you player all right talk to you later, man. and uh we'll talk to you all thanks for listening thanks for watching we appreciate it. we'll talk to you tomorrow peace